Hello, this is Dr. Joe Trout from the Physics Program at the Richard Stockton College of New Jersey. This is the course Linux for Scientists and Engineers. And this is the second part of a lecture on utilities. We're going to start with a review of the last lecture. If you remember, we said a utility was a short program that lets you do things like list the contents of a directory, or copy a file, or make a directory. Last time we also talked about the directory tree, and we said everything begins with the root directory. And this is represented by a slash. There's also a slash root directory off of the root directory. And this is the home directory for the super user root. We said this super user, whose name was root, could do anything it wanted on the computer. It could delete files, and it can move anywhere around the file structure. There is also a directory called bin, and that's where most of the utilities lived. There's also a directory called var, and var was important because underneath that directory is a directory called log, and in the, that directory is a file called messages that contains all the messages for the file for the um, operating system. For example, it contains error messages and warnings. Another important directory is slash home, and that's where each user has a home directory, and usually that home directory is named as the user's user's name. So for example, my home directory is Joe Trout, and my username is Joe Trout. Here we see there's two other users listed here, a Mike L and a Rose T. So let's look at the ncarg directory, and let's do a listing for it. NCARG might be where programs from the National Center for Atmospheric Research live. So the NCAR graphics directory. So how would you get a long listing of the NCAR directory using absolute referencing? Well, we begin at the root directory to show you the hidden files. And these hidden files begin with a period. How would you copy file one into dash into slash var temp? So this is a temporary directory where you, things end up that you're not going to keep around for a long time. So the utility for copying is CP. And we can say cp space slash home slash joe trout slash desktop slash file one and then a space slash var slash temp slash file one dot original or ORIG in this case. Note that the extension on this file has more than three letters, and that's acceptable in Linux or Unix. A lot of times, if you're going to modify a file, you first want to make a copy of it in case the modifications you make don't work or have a problem. You can always get back to the original. How would you make a copy of file 2 to var temp. 
keeping the same name if you're in the directory slash home slash Joe Trout slash directory one. Once again, you'll use the copy directory. And what we need to do is go up a directory, then over to desktop, and then down to ncarg, and we can file we can find file two there. If you remember from the last lecture, two periods mean go up one directory. So here we are in directory one. If we say dot dot, we go up a directory. We're in Joe Trout now. Then we can type desktop and then ncar g and then file two. Note also that since we're using the same name, we don't have to write the name again. So you only need to write the name if you're going to change the name. How about if we're in slash root? How would you make a backup copy of file 3 and call it file3.org? Then we can say copy go up a directory dot dot then slash home slash joe trout slash desktop slash ncar g slash file three and we're trying to copy it into the directory we, we are in so we just use a dot so a single period or a single dot means this directory right the directory you're currently in How would you make a directory named backup in your own home directory? If you remember the utility for making a directory is mkdir. And there's a nice alias called tilta. And tilta is an alias for your home directory. So make directory tilta, which is the symbol above the tick mark which is next to the number one key and then slash backup. Now how can you make a copy of file three in the directory you just made? And we want to name it file3.org. We can say copy slash home slash Joe Trout slash desktop slash file one and then tilta and tilta once again means your home directory slash backup slash file three dot org do you remember what the su utility does so the su utility let you switch user. So for example, if you log in as yourself using your username and you needed to do something to the system files, you want to switch to the root user. You won't have to log out and then log back in. You can just say SU enter. The operating system will ask you for the password. And if you're correct, you'll become root. SU dash root, I'm sorry, SU dash enter switches you to root and gives you all the attributes of root. So for example, if you did an SU dash and then press the enter key, it would ask you for the password. Once you gave the correct password, it would put you in root's home directory right away. Sometimes if you're logged on as root or a super user, you can SU to somebody else. So for example, if you were logged on as root and you would wanted to become me, you could say SU dash Joe Trout. And after you give, well, if you're root, you won't have to give a password. You'll just become 
Joe Trout and it will pl place you in my home directory. You might need to do that, for example, if a user has left the college or has left your research program and you need to take a look at their files and, and the things they've done. Or the user asks you to take care of something and you can go ahead and log on as root and do it that way. No one should ever give each other their passwords, but this is a way to get around that. If you in case of an emergency. You may remember the cat utility concatenates files. So if you had a text file and you say cat that text file, it will print that file to the screen. If you gave the utility more than one file, so if you said cat file one and file two, what it would do is first print file 1 to the screen and then print file 2 right after it. So for example, let's take file 1.txt. We say cat file 1.txt and what file 1 contains is actually the words this is file 1 and line 1 period, line 2 period. If we do cat file 2 this is just a text file that says this is file 2 and line 3 and line 4. If I do cat file 1.txt space file 2.txt it prints file 1 to the screen and then prints file 2 immediately following it. Don't forget that dollar sign is part of the prompt and that's how you know when the computer is, is ready for you to do something. It prompts you. In this case, it looks like the prompt that, this, that I am using is the directory and a dollar sign. That's the prompt. And the directory I am in right now. The more utility is similar to cat, only it types or prints one screen full of text at a time. To get to the next screen full of text, you hit the spacebar. Hitting the enter key will give you one line at a time. And the letter Q will quit. So for example, here's a more on file3.txt and file3 actually just contains the words this is a test file and then line 1, line 2, down to line 21. If we do a more file3.txt it prints out a screen full of text and then tells you more and how much of the text is showing or is, has been covered. This file isn't very big and on the first pass it prints out 86 percent of the file. Once you hit the space bar it'll print out the rest of the file. If the file is really long and you found what you wanted you might just want to type Q and it would quit for you. We've been talking about text files. How do you know if a file is a text file? There's the file utility. So here's some examples. If I do file examples slash dislin underscore one dot pdf, the file command returns that it is a pdf document. If I try the file utility on a .c or C program file, it returns that it is in fact an ASCII C program. If I try it on a Fortran file, so .f, it tells you it's a Fortran file. 
if I was type uh, the file utility and then desktop, it will tell you that the desktop is a directory. How about if it tries bin cp? We know that's a utility. And, it, and if we the file returns the information that it's a 64-bit executable. If I use the file utility on file1.txt, it says that it's ASCII text. If I tried doing a file utility on slash var slash log slash messages, what the file command returns is that messages is a regular file, but that I have no permission to read it. If I use the switch user command and become root and give it the proper password and try it again, what it tells me is that it's an ASCII text file, which means I can use things like cat and more on that file. So what does the grep utility do? So that's G-R-E-P, grep. And you're probably thinking that's not a fair question to ask because we didn't cover it in, util in the last lecture. However, we did talk about a utility named MAN that stood for manual. So if I want to look at the manual for the grep utility, it tells me that it searches the named input for a string. So for example, I could type grep and then a string of text and a file name and it will look for that string inside the file. And if it finds it, it'll type out the line that contains the string of text. If I use a dash i as an option, then it will ignore the case, right? So it'll take uppercase and lowercase letters of the string. So for example, let's say we're having a problem we're going to look in var log messages to see if we can find out anything about the problem and we'll grep for the word error. So if we look at var log messages there's a couple of messages files and what happens is once the messages file becomes large enough the operating system saves it under a different name and that name, of course, you could see has to do with the date. So for instance, there's a messages 2013-04-21. So that was a backup copy of var log messages that was made on the, four, on the 21st of April. So look at, let's look at the var log messages file that was saved on 2013 on the 11th of April. So we'll grep for error. And what you see is that a file named wavelets file n had a segment fault. And it tells you about it. So it just found one error message where we had lowercase e, lowercase r, lowercase r, lowercase o, lowercase r. If I grep dash i instead, it actually found two errors. And there happened to be an error where the error message began with a uppercase e. And this seems to be some kind of network error. 
So it said a net link, a net link Paul error four, and we could look up and find out what that error actually is. So this time using the dash I, it ignored cases and found the word error no matter how we printed it. You'll find grep to be really useful in doing things just like this. If you're looking for error messages in the message file. And also if you're looking for strings of text in your programming files. Don't forget that messages is a very important file and it contains lots of messages to the to the operating system that you probably there's also a utility called dmessage and this um, prints out what's the um, information in var log messages and shown here is the man, man page for dmessage So if you type D message, it will go ahead and print out what's in the ring buffer of the operating system. Another command you'll find useful is the find utility. As you can imagine, that's used to find things. So for example, you can use it to find files. Maybe you've forgotten where you've put a file. It'll help you find it. So the example shown here is find and start at the root directory. So look through the entire file system. And then dash name and then the file you want to look at. Here the file is known is called shadow. And the shadow file actually contains the passwords that it, the users use. So for example, find slash dash name shadow, it tells you where that file is. It's in Etsy. So it's in the directory Etsy and its name is shadow. Two more useful utilities are where is and which. If you type where is and a utility, it will tell you where that utility is located. Now it's possible that a user has modified the utility and made a copy of it, or that some program uses a special version of a utility. The which command tells you which one is actually being used. So let's look at an example. If I do a where is cat and cat's a utility, it shows you that there's a cat in slash bin, in slash user local bin, and there's also a cat in user share man, man1. So as you can imagine, the man um, directory contains all the man pages. If you do where is dash b cat, it once again finds the cat utility, this time ignoring the man pages. So it only finds the binary files. Now if you use which dash b cat, there's actually two copies. There's one in bin cat and there's one in user local bin cat. If you type which cat, it'll tell you which one of those you are currently using. So in this case, it's using user local bin cat is the cat utility you are using. 
Once again, if you want to, you can write your own cat directory, your own cat utility, and place it somewhere. And if you did define command, or where is command, excuse me, it will, would also show you that copy, that copy of the cat utility. Now might also be a good time to discuss pipes. If you think of a pipe, if, for example a water pipe in your house, it brings water from one location to another. A pipe in Unix or Linux takes the output of one utility and pipes it to the input of the next utility. So for example, if you tried the dmessage utility, you'll notice that it runs off the screen. So what you can do is pipe that to more and it will present the messages one screen full at a time. So dmessage pipe more will give you all the system messages that are in the ring buffer and it will print it to the screen one screen full at a time and the space bar will let you advance to the next screen and Q would quit. So here's the example. You type D message and pipe it to more. By the way, the pipe symbol is right above the slash symbol. which is right above the enter key on most keyboards. By the way, we can use more than one pipe. So here shows an example of three utilities. The first one is find and start at the root directory slash and dash C time 30. I'll let you look up the man page for find to find out what C time is, but what it means is that it's, it, it's the count of the number of days. So for example, here this shows 30 times 24 hours, so it'll find any files that have been modified or created in the past 30 days. So this might be good, right? You forget what you've called the file. You can do a find all the files that you created in the last 30 days or whatever, whatever, how many ever days you think it was since you made the file. And this will find it for you. Now we'll do a grep-v proc. The dash v is kind of an inverted, inverted grep. So it'll show you anything that does not contain the string proc. So grep-v proc will show you everything that does not contain proc. And then we'll pipe it to more because there may be more than a screen full. So here two pipes are being used. So we're going to search through the entire directory system starting at root and we're going to look for any file that has been changed within or created in the last 30 days. And we're only going to print the ones that do not contain the string PROC and finally we're going to pipe it to more to give us a screen full at a time. There's also some special characters in Linux and Unix. The first one is the question mark. This matches a single character. 
The second one is the asterisk. This is matches any string. So the easiest way to explain this is, look to, is to look at a bunch of examples. If I do an ls on a directory and it shows me a bunch of files, so there's file 111.tx, file 111.txt, file 112.tx, and so forth. If I do an ls asterisk, or sometimes I just call it star, dot txt, it'll show me all of those files that have the extension txt. If I do an ls star dot tx, it'll show me all the files that have the extension dot tx. If I do an ls file one question mark dot txt, it finds the file file one one dot txt file 14.txt, file 1a.txt, and file 1d.txt. If I do an ls file 1 question mark dot question mark question mark question mark, it finds all the files that start with file 1 followed by some character or number and then the period and then anything any three letters or numbers and here shows you a couple more examples If I do an ls star dot star, that shows me all of the files that have any name dot any extension. This is useful for using things for doing things like finding files. So for instance, if I do a file slash Joe Trout. That means look in the directory starting at slash Joe Trout. And then look for the name star or asterisk power asterisk log dot C. And it prints out the file. So for instance, there was a plot power log dot C a plot power wavelet log dot c, a plot power log dot c, and it goes through and finds all the files for you. Here's one more utility, the echo utility. The echo utility prints to the screen. So for example, by the way, whenever you have a new utility, it's always a good idea to look at the man pages. And echo, the man pages says that it displays a line of text. So for example, if you typed echo, quotation marks, this is a test, period, quotation marks, it would print to the screen, this is a test. If you did echo uppercase P-A-T-H path, it would type the word path to the line. Path is actually a variable in Linux, and the path tells you that when you type a command, this is where the operating system will look for that command or that utility. To find the value of a variable, you can type echo dollar sign path 
So dollar sign means tell me what the value is of that variable. So once again, if I just type echo path, it prints the word path. If it types echo dollar sign path, it tells me the value of the path. In this case, it begins at user local ncar bin. Then it goes to user lib64 qt 3.3 bin and so forth and so on. So what's going to happen is when I type a command or a utility, it will start looking for that utility in these directories. Here's another variable in Linux, user. Variables are usually have all uppercase letters. So if I do echo user with all uppercase letters, it prints the word user to the screen. If I type echo dollar sign user, it prints my username, Joe Trout. There's some special variables that we'll be using, such as ncar root, excuse me, ncar g root, that stands for ncar graphics, or the National Center for Atmospheric Research graphics, underscore root. And this is where the files for the NCAR graphics program reside. If I just type echo NCAR G root, it just prints that to the screen. If I say echo dollar sign NCAR G root, it types user local NCAR G. By the way, if you just type echo and nothing, it prints nothing to the screen. These variables are good because, for instance, NCAR graphics may write a program which needs to access a bunch of executables. They're in some directory somewhere. And instead of making you put in the directory all the time, all you have to do is set up a variable with the right path, in this case user local ncar g, and the programs can find all the utilities they need or all the executable files. So this is probably a good place to stop. The next video will continue and talk more about Linux utilities. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at joseph.trout at stockton.edu. Thank you.